You are listening to the IFH Podcast Network. For more amazing filmmaking and screenwriting podcasts, just go to ifhpodcastnetwork.com. Welcome to the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, episode number 471. Everything will be tokenized and connected by a blockchain one day. Fred Eshram. Broadcasting from the back alley in Hollywood, it's the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, where we show you how to survive and thrive as an indie filmmaker in the jungles of the film biz. And here's your host, Alex Ferrari. Welcome, welcome to another episode of the Indie Film Hustle Podcast. I am your humble host, Alex Ferrari. Today's show is sponsored by Rise of the Film Entrepreneur, how to turn your independent film into a profitable business. It's harder today than ever before for independent filmmakers to make money with their films. From predatory film distributors ripping them off to huckster film aggregators who prey upon them, the odds are stacked against the indie filmmaker. The old distribution model of making money with your film is broken and there needs to be a change. The future of independent filmmaking is the entrepreneurial filmmaker or the film entrepreneur. In Rise of the Film Entrepreneur, I break down how to actually make money with your film projects and show you how to turn your indie film into a profitable business. With case studies examining successes and failures, this book shows you the step-by-step method to turn your passion into a profitable career. If you're making a feature film, series, or any other kind of video content, the Film Entrepreneur Method will set you up for success. The book is available in paperback, ebook, and of course, audiobook. If you want to order it, just head over to www.filmbizbook.com. That's film, B-I-Z, book.com. Now, guys, before I get started, I wanted to let you know that next week is going to be the launch of this big project I have been working on that will help independent filmmakers and screenwriters get their projects funded, finished, and distributed. So keep an eye out for that. Now, There's been a lot of talk lately about this thing called NFTs, and it's going to revolutionize um, the the world of the artist and being able to put the money back into artist's pockets. And of course, when I heard about this, I was like, well, what does this mean for us as independent filmmakers? So I wanted to put together an episode that would be a guide to all independent filmmakers out there on what NFTs are and the many different ways you can use them to possibly generate revenue for your film or fundraise for your film or distribute your film and so many other things. And we'll talk about that in this episode. But let's first off talk about what an NFT is. An NFT is a non-fungible token, which means that is a unique digital file that is registered on the blockchain. Now, before I continue with NFT, I need to explain to you what blockchain is. Now, many of you might have heard the term blockchain associated with cryptocurrency like Bitcoin or Ethereum or Deutschcoin or some many other cryptocurrencies out there. The technology of blockchain is revolutionary, and I personally believe it will transform the world if not as big or bigger than the internet did. I know that's a very big statement, but you'll understand in a minute. What blockchain is basically is a ledger. It is a public ledger that cannot be messed with, hacked, adjusted, and it's completely transparent for everybody to see. So every time there's a transaction, it gets put on a blockchain, and then that blockchain is registered there, and then the next page in that ledger, let's say, which we call a block, will be the next one, and then other transactions happen there, and then another one and another one, and it goes on for infinity, but you can't go back to page two or three and adjust something or erase a number or change something because it will screw up the entire blockchain, and it's it's impossible to do. So Bitcoin has been around for 13 years since 2008 when it was first uh, released, and that was the first time the concept of blockchain was presented to the world. In that time, no one has been able to hack, modify, or adjust the Bitcoin blockchain. It is not possible to do. It is as perfect of an idea as anything that's come out of humanity in such a long time. And I don't want to go into so deep into blockchain, but that is the basis of what NFTs are because 
NFTs live on a blockchain. Now, when I first heard about NFTs, I was just like, what? I don't, I don't understand what it is. Is it a digital file? Why are people spending millions of dollars for these digital files? Well, in February 2021, there was a digital artist named Peebles who sold a digital artwork for $69.3 million in an auction. And the founder, Jack Dorsey, of Twitter sold his first tweet for $2.9 million. And it is essentially a digital collectible. Now, I know a lot of you out there who are probably either my vintage or older or might not get this. And I'm going to break it down for that part of the audience right now because the younger crowd might understand what this is. It is essentially a baseball card. It is a comic book. It is a garbage pail kid. It is a a Pokemon card. They're just collectibles. But unlike those examples I gave you where there is hundreds if not thousands of rookie cards out there from a baseball player, there's only one. Now you could make multiple versions of it. You could do a limited run of you know a thousand or a hundred or fifty if you like, but they are digital collectibles. So, and you, a lot of people are asking, well, why would you pay money for something that you could just download a JPEG off online for, uh, or buy a you know buy buy a copy of it and put it up on your wall? Well, it's the same reason why people buy cop posters and prints and limited edition prints of artists or they buy replicas of Van Gogh paintings and put it up on their walls because limited edition prints are the same thing as NFTs. You can, Or if it's not limited edition prints, you want the actual print. So what would you rather own? Would you rather own the Mona Lisa or would you rather own a poster of the Mona Lisa? And that's what this all is. These are That's what an NFT is. It is a digital collectible. Now, how is this going to work for us as independent filmmakers and screenwriters? How is that going to work? Well, let me give you an example. Let's say that Van Gogh painted a painting and uh, he went and sold it to a art gallery for $500 because no one knew who Vincent Van Gogh was at the moment he sold that painting to a gallery. Someone at the gallery said, this guy has some talent. Let me buy this thing for 500 bucks. Then fast forward five years and Van Gogh is the biggest artist in the world, let's say. And that $500 print or that $500 painting that they bought, they go off and sell it for $30 million at auction. Well, that's great for the the owner of the original painting, but that does nothing for the artist. The artist does not get to reap any of those rewards. And that has been the problem with art for the longest time uh, in the art world because the artist never gets to, you know, you know, wet his beak, as they say, or wet their, her beak, as they say, uh, when it comes to upsells or, f- or future revenue generated from their art. Well, the thing with NFTs is, is as the artist, you control what you do with your art. So if I'm an artist, I'll put my, let's say, digital painting up as an NFT, and there's only one of them. And I'll auction it off or I'll sell it at a fixed price and someone buys it for that. So let's say I put a poster up of one of my movies and uh, somebody out there decides to spend $1,000 for it. And I'm like, great, you now own that NFT. I don't own it anymore, you own it. Now let's say in a couple years, uh, my art starts selling crazy. People are really pop, really want my my poster art and all that kind of stuff. Well, then say the original owner of that first NFT that they that was bought for a thousand dollars, they put it back on the market and they sell it for a hundred thousand dollars. Well, because I created that NFT, I could put whatever percentage it is I want, but because it's on the blockchain, every single time that NFT is sold, ten percent comes back to me. That's the standard rate for this. So you could do 20%, you could do 5%, but standard percentages are 10%. So from here until eternity, every single time that NFT is sold somewhere else, anywhere, anytime, 
instantly I get 10% of whatever that sells. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now back to the show. So if this this art continues to grow in value, so someone bought it for a hundred thousand, a year later they sell it for a million, I get ten percent, and then and two years later they sell it for ten million, I get ten percent, and so on and so on and so on. So that way the artist still is able to generate revenue from their art for their lifetime. This is revolutionary for artists in this world. Now, how does this translate to independent filmmakers? Well, when I got, when I finally understood that this was basically a baseball card, a digital collectible version of a baseball card or a comic book, I'll use this analogy. Imagine that Steven Spielberg created an NFT for his first short film called Amblin. And that was his first short film, and he put it out as an NFT, and he sold it for $100. That would be the equivalent of a Mickey Mantle rookie card. How much would Amblin's short film be worth as an NFT today? How much would it have been worth when Jaws hit or when Raiders of the Lost Ark hit or when E.T. hit or when Jurassic Park or Schindler's List hit and all these other milestones in Steven Spielberg's career? What would that short film be worth? Would it be worth $5 or would it be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, possibly millions? That is what we're talking about here, guys. So imagine a world where filmmakers are treated like baseball players or like your favorite comic book character. The first appearance of Spider-Man is worth millions of dollars. Um, But as the career goes on, let's say, I'll keep that example going. Um, or I'll switch over to a, a, a contemporary director as well. Let's talk about Chris Nolan. So Chris Nolan make, made his first feature film called The Following. If we if we would have had an NFT for The Following, how much would that NFT be worth today? So after that, he creates an NFT for Memento. How much would that NFT be worth today? And he continues to create NFTs per movie, per project that he makes throughout his career for people to buy, trade, and sell because they are now buying into him as an artist. Just like you would buy a a rookie card for Mickey Mantle, but then you would also buy every year that he's playing baseball, you would buy that year's card. The equivalent would be with filmmakers. Imagine if you owned Reservoir Dogs NFT, Quentin Tarantino's first feature film, or Pulp Fiction, or Django Unchained, or Inglorious Bastard. Imagine if you had the rights, or excuse me, if you owned that NFT. And that could be one NFT, or it could be a limited edition of maybe a hundred NFTs or a thousand NFTs. But that's all the NFTs that will ever be made of that piece of art. Now, that's that's the way I've been able to wrap my head about around this, seeing like wh- where can we go with this? Where can independent filmmakers go? Now, that is one way you can use NFTs. Kevin Smith is now currently using an NFT to sell all distribution rights to his next film. Now, that means that the person who buys that NFT owns the movie, owns it and can exploit it and do whatever they want with it from here until eternity. Now, if they ever sell these rights, Kevin gets 10% and the producers of the film get 10%. That's one way of going about it. And also with buying the rights, Kevin included in that NFT, full marketing, promotions, interviews, they're going to help the film, whoever buys those rights to get it out into the world. And he has a stipulation as well that you have to release it. You can't just sit on it and just go, ha ha ha, no one will ever see this movie. So, that is another way. We have a up and coming interview with the first feature film ever, independent film to ever sell NFTs for an independent film. And that film's called Latawana with uh, Trevor, the director is going to be on as well as his producing partner. We're going to talk all about how he did it. And what they did essentially was sell shares in their movie. So you're selling shares as NFT. So now every time there's money to be made from anytime there's money that comes in these these people who own the nfts will get a piece of 
the movie. So there's a, that's another way to make monies with NFTs and independent films. Even another way is to essentially crowdfund your film with NFTs, meaning that you can put out a thousand shares for your for your film as NFTs, and people could start buying them. And you can set whatever price you want. You can auction it if you like. And you can raise capital to make your movie if you have an audience, if you have people that will believe in the project you're doing and so on. But this is unlike crowdfunding, it's they're just buying shares in your movie and they can do that. Now, how is this all done? This is all done using cryptocurrency. So the reason why NFTs work, it's not because they're sending you a check every single time a sale comes in. It all happens automatically on the blockchain to your to your cryptocurrency wallet. Usually it's using Ethereum, which is a whole other conversation, but that is the that is the cryptocurrency that they're using for um, NFTs right now. But the thing is, guys, the NFTs right now are in their infancies. Everyone's just trying to figure out what to do with it, what what's going on with it, how to do it. Some people are selling NFTs with physical things with it. They're selling uh, experiences with their NFT. So if you buy my NFT, you'll also get a hard copy version of it, and you'll also get, um, you know, a conference call with me, and you can maybe get an autographed picture from the star. And they just constantly are packaging things together. So nobody really knows what to do with the film and how to uh, with, with the with the NFTs and how to actually market it because it's all brand new. This is essentially the internet in 1996. Okay, that's what NFTs and blockchains are right now, the concept of a blockchain. People are starting to figure out, imagine in 1995 if I told you to go, go to this URL, nobody would have understood. A lot of people would have not understood what you're talking about. There was a group of people that did, but many people wouldn't. It's the same thing now. People are like, what is cryptocurrency? I don't know. What is a blockchain? What is that? What is an NFT? These are things that will be part of our societal vernacular in the coming years. These things, everybody will understand what an NFT is, just like everybody now knows what www.blahblahblah.com means or what at, the at symbol is for email or what email even was, trying to explain what email was to somebody who didn't understand it. It's the same thing that's going on right now with NFTs, blockchain, and cryptocurrency. And I promise you one thing, the moment the studios understand what's going on with NFTs, they are going to jump in because what would you think the NFT for the latest Star Wars movie is or the limited edition stuff that they're going to put out for the next Star Wars movie or for the next Marvel movie? What would the Avengers Endgame be worth as an NFT? What would Iron Man's NFT be worth and all sorts of different products and NFTs that they can create limited editions for, all of these digital assets that they can create and auction off to not only sell, um, make money with the actual NFT, but the marketing. Can you imagine that Disney puts up the Avengers uh, Endgame NFT and there's only one and you get to auction it. I promise you that will go for millions of dollars. And the press that they will get from that in addition to just the the, the money that they're going to get is going to be invaluable. So the moment that the studios figure this out, they're, it's going to be they're going to just everyone's going to go into it cuz then they're going to go into the Casablanca NFT. The Three Stooges NFTs, the um, the Jaws NFTs, and they're going to go into their archives and going to pull out all of the greatest movies that they have in their catalog and start creating NFTs from those films. Because movie fans are going to want to own a digital collectible from their favorite movies. I'm telling you, this is going to happen. Can you imagine the Criterion Collection NFT of Seven Samurai? Can you imagine the Criterion Collection version of Rashomon or of any of their Chasing Amy or whatever movies that they have the NFT rights to? You mean to tell me that no Criterion Collection collector out there will not buy the NFT of their favorite films? I'm telling you, this is going to be something. It might be nothing, but I truly, truly doubt it. 
Now, I know a lot of you are asking, where do I set these up? Where can I actually sell these things? We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now back to the show. So where can I create an NFT? How, is you, how do you create an NFT? Well, there's popular marketplaces like OpenSea, Rarible, and Mintable. Mintable is the one that is, uh, has um, investment from Mark Cuban, Ashton Kutcher, and a couple of other big shots. NF- NBA Top Shots sells pro basketball moments, like highlights, like you own the highlight from LeBron doing this or Michael Jordan doing that. Uh, Major League Baseball is starting to finally get into it as well, and they're creating uh, NFTs for different moments and things like that, and they are selling out. Like they're, People are going crazy for this stuff. And I know a few of you are asking, is this a fad? Is this a bubble? Is this just a waste? I personally don't believe so. I think that it is here to stay. It's going to change, but I think, not only do I think blockchain is here to stay, blockchain will be here and will be part of every fabric of our existence, in my opinion, on the digital world in the next coming years. There's things that are being worked out. Things are, they're trying to figure out technology wise and, and bandwidth things, the exact same stuff that people were talking about when the internet showed up. Any of you old enough to know what it was like to dial up internet through the free AOL disk that you would get in a magazine, in a computer magazine, to get access to the internet, how slow it was, and nobody really understood what a website was, how to build it properly. JPEG wasn't even a thing then, so pictures took forever to download. All those things needed to be figured out. And that is what's happening right now with blockchain. NFT is just another thing that you could put on the blockchain. There's so many things that could be put on the blockchain, but NFT is that. So I personally don't believe that NFTs are fads. I think it's here to stay. I think it will change and maneuver and 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 morph into something else in the coming months and years moving forward. But I think it's here to stay. And it's a very exciting time because it's something new and it gives power back to the creator, to the artist. And I mean, right now, the music industry, musicians and artists are putting out albums in NFT and they have complete control of the the, the money flow. And labels now are putting in their contracts that they own NFT rights as well. I promise you distribution contracts are going to start coming up that we want NFT rights. This is a thing. It's here to stay in my opinion. So if you want to see an example of it, I decided to put a test study together and I launched my own NFTs. Now I have the distinction unless somebody else tells me different and I've done research and I can't find any others. I was the first person to ever upload a filmmaking tutorial on YouTube. I cannot find one anywhere else. I was the first one. It was released August 28th, 2006. Now, there are six total videos that I uploaded to YouTube, and I actually put in the NFT a a link to the YouTube video for proof and a provenance, if you will, of when this file was actually uploaded. So when you buy this NFT, you will have access and you will own one of the original six uploaded filmmaking tutorials on YouTube. Now, I only uploaded three of them currently. I wanted to see what happened. And there's three other ones. If you check out the YouTube page, you'll see that there's three other ones as well. I also think I have the first movie trailer ever uploaded to YouTube too, because I can't find it. I beat Sony Pictures by like a couple months of when they before they opened up their YouTube channel. So I, I don't think I'm the only, I'm the first movie trailer ever, but I think I'm one of the first for sure. But right now I can't find any other, uh, any other, um, movie trailers because I actually uploaded those much earlier. I forgot what date I did, but that's not an NFT. But anyway, that's regardless. So that's what we call a legacy NFT. A legacy NFT is essentially the first ever of its kind. So the first filmmaking tutorial NFT, that would be mine. Ladawana would be the first independent feature film ever uh, sold as an NFT in the history 
of, of NFTs. So those are what they call legacy NFTs. So like the first tweet ever sold as an NFT is a legacy NFT. Um, the first comic book, the first baseball card, the first garbage pail kid, these are first Pokemon card. These are legacy um, NFTs. So those are things that you should look out for as well. So I put these three up, made it really affordable right now currently because Ethereum has gone down in price is 65 bucks. If Ethereum, uh, the cryptocurrency goes back up, when I put first posted them, it was like 125 bucks. So it went down a bunch. So now they're 65 bucks, 64 bucks. So it will range depending on when you buy it. Now, Obviously, 65 bucks is not going to make or break me. I'm using this as an experiment. I want to see what happens. I want to see if there's anybody out there in the indie film hustle tribe that finds value in that. And yet you're not only buying that NFT because of its legacy, but you're also buying it because I put it up. And hopefully one day I will do other things in my career where these will become much, much more valuable. I have no idea. We'll see, but it's just a really interesting experiment. And another NFT I put up was to my first short film, Broken, which many of you know and listen to my podcast know. It was in over 200 film festivals. It was reviewed by Roger Ebert. It was basically the start of me even thinking about doing something like Indie Film Hustle back then where I created a DVD that sold 5,000 copies, made over 100,000 bucks. There's a whole, it's all sorts of stuff. I'll put links to all the story if you haven't heard that story in the, uh, the, in the show notes. But I put it up as an NFT to see what, you know, if, if you believe that one day I will do something artistically that will become more valuable or for whatever reason I become more popular and this becomes more valuable, it might be a good investment. I don't know. This is a weird conversation because I'm the artist saying, hey, maybe one day I'll be big, guys, and this will be worth a lot of money. I have no idea. This is an experiment, okay? I have no idea, but I wanted it to kind of show you, have put an example up there so you can see what, what it is and how to do it and what, you know, we'll see what happens, you know? I don't know. I have no idea what's going to happen in the future with my career, if this will be worthless or if this will be worth something or whatever. I don't know. But I wanted to show you guys, I wanted to give you an example of what this was. So if you do buy the NFT to my first short film, Broken, not only do you get the NFT, uh, the actual digital NFT file for the, the original collectible, if you will, of broken, but you also get, uh, I also threw in a bunch of physical stuff. So I'll send this stuff out to you. So you'll also get access to it digitally. So all of the special features, all the other things, uh, including those first tutorials, uh, that I upload will be sent to you digitally and you'll have access through uh, indie film hustle TV. You will also get a copy of the DVD, uh, signed by me, and you'll also get a Lipstick in Bullets, which is the Blu-ray, really rare because it was only released very little, uh, a, a, a Lipsticks and Bullets Blu-ray, which has Broken and three of my other feature films that they put into a compilation uh, Blu-ray that was released, uh, God, like eight years ago as well. So you'll get that in addition to that. Plus, you'll also get a digital collection of never-before-released poster designs that I, I created October 22nd, 2004, and those are the original files uh, as well. So you'll get a bunch of stuff when you buy this NFT. Currently, as of this recording, the NFT is running uh, $264.60. That will change depending on the, the rate of... Um, uh, of uh, Ethereum. So if these sell out, I'll put up the other three filmmaking, the first filmmaking tutorials on YouTube. So there's, you'll have the entire collection of six up there. Uh, and then I also have three other uh, short films uh, that I made that are uh, Red Princess Blues, uh, Red Princess Blues Animated, which have Lance Hendrickson in it, uh, the late great uh, Robert Forster, and I'll put those up as well as NFTs. And those are, and if those ever became a, a feature film, which I want to make one day, they might become valuable. I don't know. Again, 250 bucks, 50 bucks. It's not making or breaking me, guys. I'm just putting it out there to see what happens. It's going to be a really interesting experiment. Nobody might buy it right now. It might sell out in, in, in 15 minutes. I have no idea. So I'm really curious about it. So 
How did I put them up? Where did I put them up? I put them up on Mintable. Uh, so Mintable.app. The reason why I use Mintable is because there was no cost to put them up. If you use any of the other platforms, we'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now back to the show. Those other platforms are going to charge you what is called a gas fee. A gas fee is the cost to actually have someone verify the transaction on the Ethereum blockchain. And gas fees go up and down and they're really expensive sometimes and sometimes they're more affordable. It all depends on where Ethereum is at the time. This is one of the problems that you're trying to figure out. Um, we're trying to figure out right now, uh, not we, but the whole community is trying to figure out how to streamline this so it becomes more mainstream. Uh, you could also buy with cryptocurrency. You could also buy with a credit card. So that's why I also like Mintable as well. I know Ladawana used OpenSea to put up theirs, which is probably one of the biggest, uh, but Mintable is up there as well. And there's no cost to get things up there. So if you want to put some tests up to see what's going on, you can join me. There are no other independent films up there right now, guys. We are at the beginning stages of this stuff, guys. I don't think it's going to go away. I might be wrong, but I don't think it's going to go away. So that's why I jumped on and threw my hat in the ring to see what would happen. The same way I've done so many times before in my career, like the YouTube videos and seeing what would happen. And I had a website back in 97, 98, making money online. And I'm always trying to be ahead of the game. I'm always trying to see what's around the corner. And I think NFTs are around the corner. It's going to take a minute for everyone to figure out what to do, how to do it, how to set up standards, all that kind of stuff. And also, uh, putting things up as an NFT, you do need a little bit of technical knowledge. I'm not going to lie to you. It's not the easiest process in the world, but I learned it you know, in a couple hours watching a bunch of YouTube videos uh, and tutorials on how to do it on Mintable. Mintable is pretty easy, not that complex to do. You just have to educate yourself a little bit about it. Uh, and there's tons and tons of uh, tutorials on YouTube for free on how to update things and understand what gas fees are and all this kind of stuff. So you can learn all that stuff fairly easily, but it is doable. So I hope this episode has, you know, lit a fire under your butts to see if there's something else that you can do. Maybe another revenue stream, maybe another way to raise money, another way to um, to distribute your film and get it out there into the world. There's so many, just the opportunities are endless and the options are endless with NFTs. You can really do a whole lot with it. So let's all see what happens. You know, I'm really interested. Now, if you want to purchase or at least look at my NFTs, all you have to do is go to IFHNFT. That's like Indie Film Hustle, IFHNFT.com. And it'll take you straight to my uh, my my collection of NFTs, and let's see what happens. Again, big, huge experiment. I'm expecting that no one's going to buy anything and nothing is going to happen because I just don't know. I just don't know. So I'm really excited to see what happens. And then the next week, uh, week and a half, we're going to have some great guests on talking about NFTs, talking a little bit about blockchain um, and all that kind of stuff. So I really wanted to kind of give you guys a nice a nice collection of information about this stuff. So uh, just keep an eye out for all of those. So if you want to get links to all the stuff I've been talking about in here, and I'll throw some tutorials on how to get some stuff done and everything, I'll put those in the in, in the show notes as well at IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash 471. Thank you so much for listening, guys. I really hope this a lot of you come back to this episode and really... It helps you guys. I hope this helps everybody out there. I hope, I want to hear if you, as a filmmaker, put out some NFTs and you sell them, call me. I want to know about it. I want to see how you're doing. I, I want to hear stories about how you're using NFTs and what's going on with NFTs in, in your process, in your workflow, with your project, either at the beginning of a project, in the middle of a project, at the end of the project, whatever. I want to see what you guys in the tribe are doing reach out to me. You guys know how to get a hold of me online uh, through the website. So all you got to do is email me and message me and me or somebody from my team will hit you back. But I am very interested to see what happens. So thank you again for listening, guys. As always, keep that hustle going. Keep that dream alive. Stay safe out there and I'll talk to you soon. 
Thanks for listening to the Indie Film Hustle podcast at IndieFilmHustle.com. That's I-N-D-I-E-F-I-L-M-H-U-S-T-L-E.com.